Uh, so it seemed uh, an auspicious moment to, at the end of that show. I really should have told the band, but I never did. So we, they came off and said, what are you talking about? That's our last show. I said, well, look, I'm sorry, Mick. Maybe I should have, I should have been a bit more diplomatic about it. I said, but I, I think we've had it as a band. I think, you know, I, you know that I want to go off and do it. I said, oh, you're going to do all that bloody arty stuff. I said, probably, yeah. I said, right, I see. Well, I've got my own career. Incredible David Bowie. Oh. Hello. Hello. Excuse me. I'm quite a rock fan. I get influenced by other bands, other artists, and, and I tend to sort of steal things from them. He's the David Bowie of Happy Days. I'm, I'm a great fan of, of Fonzie, and uh, a partic I have a lot of admiration for Henry as an actor. Well. I'm very flattered. See? That's what I meant to say or do something But what I never say to say this time I really meant to so badly his time Loving somebody truly and, and, and uh, wholeheartedly and being in love are two yeah. very different conditions. Mm -hmm. I don't think being in love has anything to do with loving somebody. Cause you can never really tell All you have to do is, from a distracted mind, hit him here in, a, in his groin, <laughs> and that way... <laughs> I think any television performance of that period, I was out of my gourd. I remember she used this tall, long, tall bird with black hair, and, and, and she's uh, over apparent. she's got very piercing eyes, um, and a rather doleful expression. But I remember that she, she warmed up when we sang together, yeah. she seemed kind of a bit remote, and I, I'm not surprised that she was remote. I was probably like this crazed, like anorexic figure walking in. I, I'm sure she didn't know what to make of me. And at the end of the the uh, the medley thing i remember she sort of sort of had me and i thought oh she's quite human after all she's hopefully she was thinking the same about me do you want to be understood you know what i mean the ziggy stardust Absolutely was nothing uh, to understand I mean, was concerned um, with uh, famine in the world and so on and prophecies of the world um, running out of uh, yeah. food and stuff I mean, like I'm that a storyteller and a story writer and uh, nothing that i do is is uh, is on any kind of intellectual slant. You got no mission. No, it's just... Uh, yeah. Oh. It was Carlos's riff, the fame riff. We'd been using that riff for um, months uh, on stage in a reworking of the Flair's foot stomping, and, uh, which indeed was with uh, Luther. Everybody young and old knows how to rock and roll. Cherry did a funny dance on the piano. I remember. A shimmy. She did a shimmy. Oh, that's right, because it started off as foot stomping and ended up as I wish I could shimmy like my sister Kate. That's right. Uh, and it was all that dang, 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 foot stomping. Didn't that foot stomp and riff turn into the basis for fame, that duet with John Lennon? 
we were in the studio, you know, when John came in and, and said, right, you know, what are we going to do? And I, I said, oh, God, we haven't got, what should we do? I said, can't, it's quite that riff, that riff, that riff that you do. Come on, let's, we've got him here, let's do something with it, you know. So we got him there and we did the riff and uh, he started joining and then it became fame. What you need is in the river. Fame really exploded. And that was my least favourite track on the album, even though John had contributed to it and everything. And I had no idea, as with Let's Dance, that that was what a commercial single is. And I haven't got a clue when it comes to singles. I just don't know. I don't know about them. I don't get it. Um, and fame was uh, really uh, out of left field for me. And I had no idea that that combination of... Uh, an English expression of soul would be quite so popular in the United States. <laughs>